The debate over which is better for mixing music speakers or monitors has been raging for a while, and quite frankly, it's pointless. In this video, I'm not gonna give you a list of pros and cons for which one is better. That would be boring. But what I am gonna do is talk through how and why I use both formats throughout the recording and mixing process to hopefully help you decide which format is more beneficial to you if you can only choose one or the other. To help me with this video, Adam Audio have kindly sent me a set of their T5V studio monitors and a set of their Studio Pro SP5 headphones, which we're gonna be reviewing in this video as well. Now, if you do want a list of the pros and cons, fear not, I have you covered. I've compiled a PDF chart, which is downloadable from my website through the link in the description below. Nice. These are quite lightweight. Oh, catch. Literature. Studio Pro SP5. Oh, it's got one of those peely. Ooh, should we? I'm liking the case. That's awesome for travel. Does it have a clicking mechanism? Ah. I love this. Oh, bliss. Oh, they are comfortable. They're quite isolating as well. Oh, looking forward to hearing these. Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com, here to help you guys make the most out of your home studios. Don't forget my website is where you can find my list of the pros and cons for both of these formats of monitoring, as well as getting free access to an expanding library of drum loops that you can use for free in your recording, writing and music production. Now, if at any point throughout this video you consider purchasing these items, there are links in the description below for your convenience to the best deals online. I do get a small commission from this, but it's a great way to support the channel if you found value in this content. So, I use both monitors and speakers for music production, but before we get into how, in what order and why, let me know which headphones and speakers you're currently using in the comments below. Now, most of what I record in this studio is drums and vocals. So this usually involves condenser microphones as overheads on the drums and my trusty Jay-Z V67 on vocals. As a result, headphones are imperative for both of these instruments because they isolate the microphone from bleed from the headphones or the click track or what I'm recording along to. The Adam SP5 headphones are lightweight tight enough to play the drums without falling off and super comfortable to be worn for long periods of time. They also offer probably the best acoustic isolation I've heard in any set of headphones I've tried. Hear for yourself. Now, once I've recorded, I'll unmute the speakers, which is super easy to do on the Apollo Twin audio interface, and I'll listen back to the take or takes. Now, speakers are ideal for this because I need to hear the ambience of what I've recorded. I find speakers are better for identifying drum resonances and vocal tuning issues than the headphones are. The T5V speakers have a rear bass port, which extends the low end further than their five inch cone would suggest. This is great for gauging the kick and tom sounds as low as 45 hertz. At the other end of the spectrum, the T5V speakers, V for vertical array by the way, host UR tweeters, which extend up to 25 kilohertz, reproducing the airy space I want to capture in my vocals and all the sonic detail I want to hear in my cymbals. Now 
Now these tweeters are fitted with precision waveguides with the same dispersion control attributes as the high frequency propagation system used in Adam's flagship S-series studio monitors. These are expensive speakers. And for you guitarists who want to track directly into your audio interface through digital amp sims, these speakers seriously crank and barely distort. I could not believe how little distortion there was at maximum output and the sound remained impressively even. Moving on with the process, and once I've compiled my takes, I'll dive back onto my headphones to edit them. Now the SP5 headphones are a closed back design, which really isolate the audio from environmental noises such as traffic, neighbors, other drummers, and enable me to accurately identify any pops and clicks between audio cuts and crossfades, which I might miss using speakers. The next stage in the process is mixing, which for me involves five stages. Number one is level balancing, for which I use speakers because the crossfeed of hearing both speakers in both ears and the reflections in the room creates a more realistic listening environment that will translate better onto different sound systems. Stage two is panning. Now carefully placing your instruments in a mix and creating a precise stereo image is much easier with headphones in my opinion. Adam Audio teamed up with Ultrasone to make the SP5s, the German headphone company who created S-Logic technology that offsets the speakers in the headphone cups and has them facing downwards so the audio hits the outer ear first. This utilizes the oracle anatomy of the ear which is responsible for us helping perceive distance and direction of sound. Now this is ideal to help us accurately place our instruments in the stereo field. The S-Logic technology also helps reduce ear fatigue, which is useful with headphones, by 40% because they require three to four decibels less sound pressure to achieve the same volume perception. Interesting. Stage three is EQ and compression, and I think both tools can be really useful for the job here. Stage four is effects processing. Now I recently mixed the entirety of my last song Bright Lights on headphones and I think it came out really well. Headphones really isolate delays and reverb tails without the room influencing how much or how little of this you hear in the audio. Although a common complaint about mixing on headphones is that because the reverb is so close and easy to hear, you can easily overcompensate and end up with less reverb or delay in your mix than you actually may need. Now you could argue there are elements of bright lights that are a little too dry. The snare drum and the verse vocals come to mind. But have a listen for yourself and let me know what you think in the comments below. Stage five is referencing and this is where I go mad and listen to mixers on every different speaker system, set of headphones, earbuds, car stereo, uh, live venue sound system I can find just to check how the mixers translate. Now the T5V speakers have a few useful features that help you reference your mixers more accurately. Adam Audio are well known for their ribbon tweeters, especially in their A7X models, which I used to have in the studio. And I was excited to see a similar ribbon tweeter in these. The stereo spread, the detail in the top end, and the recreation of that space and airiness we all go for is incredible with these tweeters. The T5V speakers also come with a two decibel adjustable high EQ shelf at five kilohertz and an adjustable low EQ shelf at 300 hertz. This enables us to do two things. Firstly, to focus our speakers to the upper or lower frequency band information to better gauge the instrument balances in those frequency bands. And secondly, to EQ the speakers to our room a little bit if we are in a less than ideal mixing environment, which let's face it, most of us are. So we can compensate for a toppy harsh sounding room by lowering the top end or a boomy, muddy sounding room by lowering the low end, or a dry room by boosting either one. These speakers also have another trick up their sleeve. The high frequency propagation system waveguide hones the dispersion of the speakers to an even plane in the horizontal axis, but tightly focused in the vertical axis. This minimizes potentially distracting reflections from horizontal surfaces in the studio, such as desks, consoles, and furniture, which can cause strange phasing issues. This ensures the stereo image remains consistent and creates a broad sweet spot, even at high output levels, which is great in case you move around in the room like I do sometimes, or if you've got more people in the room and you can't always sit 
perfectly in the middle and two of you are sat off center, you're still gonna get a good listening position. Now, in an ideal world, we'd have multiple sets of speakers and headphones for referencing, but if you're just starting out with music production and you're wondering which one you should go for if your budget allows for only one or the other, then I would definitely suggest getting headphones first so you can at least record vocals and acoustic instruments. Of course, if you're just recording DI'd guitars or you're programming your beats, then speakers are possibly a good start as well. The Adam T5V monitors offer exceptional value for money, and they are a really great choice for your first set of speakers, or even a second set of monitors if you want a lower cost set for reference listening. A comparison between cheap and expensive speakers is coming, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when that video comes out. The SP5 headphones offer precise stereo imaging and accurate frequency detailing with a smooth, full sound that really is a pleasure to mix with. Now these are not what I'd describe as budget-friendly headphones, but they do offer a level of accuracy and detail that justifies their price point. A comparison video between cheap and expensive headphones is also coming soon. Now these headphones are slightly top-end heavy, and this is backed up by the frequency response profile in Sonarworks you can see on screen now. However, this can be compensated for by using the SP5 profile that Sonarworks offer in the software. If you're wondering what Sonarworks is, it's an essential piece of software for any home studio, but I'm not gonna go into what it is exactly in this video. Please click on the link in the description for this video on screen now. Please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, it helps you to recognize it. I've been Ed Dawn, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the comparison videos and I'll see you on the next one.